to the second unit, the role of emotional intelligence in leadership. So this is the first lesson, which is entitled, What are emotions for? The objectives that have been set for this lesson are the following. Determine the role of emotions in your life. Get familiar with the triune brain. Identify the emotions appropriately and avoid emotional hijacking. Now, uh, this time I won't ask you to answer a few quest questions, you know, to put your cognitive processes in motion before developing the topic. Yet, I'd still like uh, you to write something down. First, describe the emotion you are feeling right now and the sensation it is creating in your body. Second, list the emotions you have felt in your life so far. I'm definitely curious to know the feeling you're experiencing right now, but I'd also like to know how many emotions you are able to list. The majority of people will put down three or four emotions, such as fear, anger, happiness and sadness. If they watch the cartoon Inside Out, they might list disgust as well. By the way, yeah, uh, the cartoon is worth watching, so if you haven't done it yet, consider doing it. So why is it important to pay so much attention to emotions? Why shall we focus on them at all when there are more important issues uh, to tackle? Uh, if I want to know how to lead a team, why should I care so much about my feelings? Shouldn't feelings be left out when work is involved, when we have to use our cognitive abilities? Some valid questions, don't you think so? But let's refresh our memory. In our previous videos, we mentioned that when someone loses control, your tranquility is a strength. Or that if you want to be perceived as charismatic, you should be able to show presence, power and warmth. Or that daring leadership requires you to show up in the arena and lean into vulnerability. Or that psychological safety substantially contributes to the success of a company. There are so many other aspects mentioned that actually referred to emotions, or better say, to the ability to manage emotions. And if you remember the 10 causes leaders identified as hindering the success of the organizations, all can be said to be a result of poor emotion management. Unable to identify their emotions, people tend to armor up and hide behind their shields. This creates only stress and frustration, which result in disconnection. Believe it or not, absolutely everything in life depends on our ability to appropriately identify and manage emotions. When it comes to leadership, people definitely need a leader who will be able to do so. This is what daring leadership is all about, and this is also true for a leader with a scientist's mindset. It also becomes clear what learn, leading from the heart will imply. Remember we said leaders might either invest a reasonable amount of time attending to their fears and feelings or squander an unreasonable amount of time trying to manage ineffective and unproductive behavior. Some people still find it difficult to accept that emotions play such a crucial role in their lives as that will make them think that they don't actually control the situation. It's not their thinking brain that is cognition in charge, but it's their emotional brain that is the emotions. However, Antonio Damasio says, we are not thinking machines that feel, we are feeling machines that think. How can it be so? There is a perfectly reasonable explanation for this, and it is linked to our evolution as a human species, or better say, to the evolution of the human brain. Our thinking brain, that is the neocortex, the one that is believed to be primarily responsible for perception, decision-making and language, uh, the part that sets our cognitive processes in motion, is the most recently evolved area of the brain. Now, what evolved long before the neocortex? I'd like to briefly introduce to you the notion of the trion brain to clear the things up. A commonly accepted way to look at the brain is as one consisting of three layers. 
The most, the most ancient is the reptilian brain. This is what makes you function on autopilot. It's responsible for your body temperature changes, your breathing, moderating your glucose levels. So all those vital functions that happen daily in your body without you actually knowing it. Then um, the limbic system developed, which is the emotional part of the brain. So we can say that it's sitting on the reptilian brain. It developed in the first mammals, useless to say that reptiles do not have it. This is the part responsible for our fears, anxieties, for all the emotions that we experience. Finally, the neocortex is the most recently evolved part of the brain. Now, think about what can cause your heart rate to beat faster than normal. It's not the reptilian brain. It's a signal coming from your limbic system that activates the reptilian brain who has to adapt to the new situation, putting in motion the survival mechanisms. This can happen because a certain emotion experienced by you was perceived as a, as a threat and in that situation your reptilian brain activates the mechanisms that help humankind survive as a species. Please keep in mind this does not happen in your neocortex. You do not control this. It happens on an instinctive level. This is the case when impulsive feeling overrides the rational. Yet what helped our ancestors survive millions of years ago is not relevant at present. Now, uh, we do not need to activate fight or flight response in every situation um, that the limbic system triggers fear. In the jungle, when hearing a noise coming from the dark was essential for survival, as this was the way to react to a possible imminent threat. At present, this can be extremely unhelpful. So to make it clear, you have to deliver an extremely important speech. You are well prepared and yet your heart rate beats faster, maybe you are sweating. Why is it happening? Because of the fear in the limbic system you experience. You are afraid not to be convincing enough, for example, or that your audience will not like your speech. Your reptilian brain sets the survival mechanism in motion, even if you don't need it. So as a result, your heart rate increases, the stress hormone cortisol is released in your blood so that you can either fight or flight what has been perceived by the reptilian brain as a threat. The trouble is that when our instincts take over, the neocortex, the thinking brain, is totally shut up. This is why we find difficult, if not impossible, to think in such a situation. This is known as emotional hijacking. Now, you see that the fear of speaking in public can activate responses that will not help you deliver that speech successfully. But why do you feel fear in the first place? This is again related to our limbic system and the causes can be various. No matter how counterintuitive this may sound, but the short answer is because you care. You are afraid that you might fail and as a result be rejected by your audience and that would be perceived as an imminent threat. Why is it such a big deal? We are social creatures and we are biologically wired to be socially connected. We want to be part of the group. In addition, rejection will most probably trigger the feeling of shame in us, as if we are not good enough. Brene Brown has researched shame and defines it as the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love, belonging and connection. In a shame culture, empathy is inexistent, whereas the gene and connection we are naturally wired for can't exist alongside shame. So, in most social interactions, that is, when we deal with people, the fear is caused by shame in our limbic system. Being aware of our emotions means leaning into vulnerability, and it can be definitely quite challenging. However, it is vital at present to be aware of all this in order to have our part in managing our emotions so that the reptilian brain does not activate the survival responses of our body when we are not in life-threatening 
situations. It is also vital to be able to identify the emotion correctly. You've seen that fear can be the umbrella term for a wide range of emotions. If we look into it, we can see that it can actually be shame, anxiety, powerlessness, worry, so on and so forth. So we need to learn to name the exact emotions we are experiencing. By identifying the emotion appropriately, we can deal with it so that we function in the society successfully. I'd like to end with another example. So imagine you are leading a team and you are afraid you are not going to meet the set deadline. This can be very bad for the whole team. So you might be extremely worried and maybe even overwhelmed by a sense of powerlessness. If you are not aware of this, you won't acknowledge and deal with this emotion properly. As a result, your reptilian brain will turn on the fight or flight response and you might end up shouting at your team. Now, the team won't know what that you are actually afraid and will see only anger coming from your part. Do you think that will boost their motivation to work harder? Most probably no. There is no psychological safety, no learning culture, there is no feeling of connection. So what are some lesson takeaways? Emotions are crucial in what we do as they trigger certain reactions in us. It's a good thing um, to look at the brain as consisting of three parts, reptilian brain, limbic system and the neocortex. As the neocortex is the relatively new part of our brain, the reptilian brain might activate wrong responses at present. If emotions are not properly identified and managed, the body reacts instinctively, which can be very counterintuitive at present as uh, um, uh, social encounters uh, are not life-threatening. Uh, 